I've been watching John Cena over these past few months, and I've been seeing him compete in the ring, and I've been seeing the moves that he's pulling off and all different types of things. And one thing in particular that I've made note of is the fact that so many people in the year 2015 have kicked out of the attitude adjustment. And John Cena has been shuffling around the card a bit lately in WWE, and he's moved a little lower towards the mid card and he's having matches with a wide range of individuals people that you normally wouldn't see john cena competing in a ring with people like cody rhodes wade barrett uh, dean ambrose and you can throw on uh, neville and cesaro many more names added to that list and i've seen a few of these people kick out of the attitude adjustment and it's got me thinking in my mind could it possibly be time for john cena to retire the attitude adjustment do you buy yourself John Cena needing a new finisher? It, it depends on the way you phrase it. If you say, do I buy or sell Cena retiring the attitude adjustment? I'll, I'm going to sell that. I don't think there's any reason to get rid of it. Do I buy him getting a new finisher? I think that's a great idea. Not just because people kick out of the, the AA, but because I think one common criticism of John Cena is that his finishers look weak. People think the AA is kind of something that should be kicked out of and ironically it's kind of appropriate that people would be kicking out of it because if you look at what the move is it's not the most devastating maneuver people criticize his stf because he doesn't lock it in austin being one of those guys but i i do think it's time for cena to get a new finisher because i think it would be a fitting time considering he's had such a great year i think this might just be cena's best year from a wrestling standpoint of his entire career and the year, it's not even the entire year. It's really just these past few months ever since he won the U.S. title. And I think at this point, if you deny that Cena is a good wrestler, you are clearly deluded because you can't have that many good matches and have it be the other guy all the time. But that's sort of another another argument. But like Steve was just saying, you know, I, I think the same thing when it comes to uh, you know, some of these great matches he's had for the United States title, you can't argue the fact that it's just the other guy all the time, even though a lot of the guys he's been with are good in-ring wrestlers. He's also doing his part, too. I will say the springboard stunner, that definitely should not be his new finisher if there's going to be a new one. Hell no! Uh, uh, <laughs> somebody just said in the chat that they're uh, selling the springboard stunner. Oh, God, I'm not me selling too. the springboard stunner. I'm, I'm throwing it out. Take yeah, I'm throwing it, it out. Take it! Oh, yeah. Yes, please. I, I hate that move. It, it looks bad. I don't even think there's been one time it's looked good. A couple times it's been alright. But for the most part, it's been pretty damn bad. As far as the attitude adjustment going, I'd rather see the STF go than the attitude adjustment because I think that the STF is just not even that effective and I never thought it was that great of a submission hold or finisher for Cena. Anyway, I know he doesn't use it all the time because it's a submission move, but I've never really liked the STF and he used to not even lock it on all that correctly either. So I'd, I'd rather see the AA stay over that, but as far as the attitude adjustment goes, it's not the best finisher of all time, but I certainly think it's too deep into John Cena's career to worry about him changing his finisher. I, I'm going to sell it because I personally think the AA can stay. I really don't – like, I, I mean, if he changed his finisher, would I be that upset? No. It would be nice improvement, but I think at this point, this juncture of his career, is there really a reason to? I mean, he's like 38 years old now. Yeah, I honestly believe that there is a reason to because, like I said uh, – so many people have been kicking out of the attitude adjustment. It makes it seem as if the move has lost its effectiveness. When you have to pull out your finisher multiple times in a match, like I know it happens on the larger scale in WWE. Like if he's in a match with Randy Orton or The Rock, and you can argue if it's even acceptable in that case, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people like uh, Stardust and Wade Barrett and things like that kicking out of the attitude adjustment. Well, I just want to... I just want to mention, there's kind of a, a paradox going on here, or at least some, I'm sensing there might be some underlying hypocrisy, because we're all enjoying these matches, I'm assuming you're one of them, who really thinks these yeah. matches are awesome, but one of the reasons they're so awesome is because you have all these kickouts, they're so back and forth, they're so close. And See, here's here, here's what I'm saying, though. John Cena as, like, John Cena within the world of WWE. If we're speaking from a kayfabe perspective, John Cena has to be sitting there like, damn, this move used to win me championships. Like, why is it becoming so difficult for me to end a match with this move? Like, what I would love to see is John Cena transition the F oh, attitude adjustment over to, like, a very special signature type move to where he uses it to the point where he actually... We still get those near falls and things like that, but 
Then, like, one match, he just pulls out a move that we've never seen him use before, and he hits the guy with it, and he pins him, and he wins the match that way. Because I've looked at John Cena over these years, and people have made fun of him for the five moves of Doom and things like that, not varying his moveset. And he never changed it because it was effective. Like, he, he he's not sitting around now saying, oh, people were making fun of me for only having five moves, so I'm going to start doing more now. No, the reason why he added more moves to his moveset now is because victories are getting harder and harder to come by for John Cena. His matches are becoming more and more competitive. So in the world of the WWE, in the mind of the character John Cena he has to be thinking in his mind what if the attitude adjustment can't get it done anymore maybe I need to bring something else to the table and shock the world not just that but close the match one hit one hitter quitter so I say I'm buying it like I would like to see a new finisher from John Cena that's an interesting perspective but I think that what um was said in the chat. I think that's also very true of WWE just kind of having this as a thing that they overdo nowadays and that's people kicking out of finishers too frequently. I think that a lot of people kick out of too many different finishers too often. It's like finishers are supposed to be like, okay, they kick out of one, that's supposed to be shocking. They kick out of a second one, that's supposed to be mind-blowing. But when they're kicking out of four or five of them, it's just too damn much. And you see it way too often now. So I'd like to see Cena use different moves um, maybe to try to put people away, but I think that we're kind of getting that with like when he used the power bomb with Cesaro, and I mean the Springboard Sun is terrible. But other moves, hopefully, he will try to incorporate that, like even that leg drop off the top rope. I know that doesn't usually ever put anyone away or anything like that, but I In think the that's 80s kind of it would have. <laughs> that's for damn. That's for damn sure. In the eighties, it might have <laughs> killed somebody. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> but but. Uh, Anyway, I, I do think that it, there is an overuse of how much people kick out of finishers now, and I know that Stone Cold has been a big proponent of that. What the hell are these finishers anymore if people kick out of them so frequently? Like, nobody's finisher is that damn good. You know, there's only a few that I've ever, that you see now. Like, the Red Arrow, that's one that you never see really people kick out of. But again, if it's a big, big match for Neville, someone's going to kick out of that for the first time. Like, there's ne it's almost never like that in high-profile matches anymore. The finishers are almost always hit in high-profile matches, yet they're never usually enough. The first one is never usually enough. And I know that that's a good story to tell, but I don't think it needs to be told in every single high-profile match. I think there could be less finishers and still be amazingly good matches with a lot of great near falls. I hate to say oh, it, but I... Just look at I, uh, New I, Japan I uh, Pro Wrestling with um, Okada. The, the, I think it was just at um, Wrestle Kingdom earlier this year. That was the very first time somebody had actually kicked out of his uh, Rainmaker finisher. Like, they, they, they save moments like that. They... they in, it's it, like I would love an approach from WWE from that perspective, but maybe we're too far gone from that because I, hell, I think Undertaker. Four and five, eight, I eight, think eight. Undertaker is the guy who who started this whole thing, not just him in particular, but specifically him and Shawn, because I I if I try to pinpoint it, I think his match with Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania. What was the first one? Was it 20, 25. 25? 25. I think that was the one that started the trend of so many kickouts because I remember at that match it was crazy how many kickouts there were. And then after that, it sort of went downhill. Like, if I watch matches from before then, usually it'll take one finisher to put someone away. Yeah, and it's like I, I watched that. Nah, I think it was the second match with Cena and uh, The Rock at WrestleMania 29 when there was, like, a million finishers from the two guys. And honestly, it wasn't – at the time, I didn't really dislike it that much. But looking back on it, I liked it so much less because they over – like, there was, like, seven, eight rock bottoms, eight attitude adjustments. It was just – over the top with the finishing moves and I'm just thinking to myself matches like that could be so much better if it was just more focused on different aspects of wrestling rather than just using finisher after finisher because then it just makes the finisher look weak and I think that's a big problem in today um, because I, there, there are some finishers that yes do work but I'm talking mainly high profile matches you see too many finishers I think now but I think kicking out of one or two isn't always a bad thing I just think it doesn't need to be used every single time and it really is basically used every single time